few weeks ago, I removed the aluminum heat spreader of an AMD K62 Plus. The motivation behind it was a mod that I stumbled upon on Twitter. This mod would turn the K62 Plus into a K63 Plus by enabling an additional block of 128KB level 2 cache, for a total of 256KB. For now, I assume that AMD disabled half of the level 2 cache for reasons of market segmentation. If you want to see the entire process of deliding, modifying and reassembly of the K62 Plus, you can watch a two-part video that is already on my channel. To be fully transparent, I only tested the CPU at 400MHz with a system clock of 66MHz. We shall see in a future video if the CPU is stable at its rated 450MHz or even higher clocks. So there it is now, the modified AMD K62 Plus with double the cache size. But does it actually benefit from the additional cache? Full of expectations, I fired up some benchmarks and compared the original K62 Plus having only 128KB of level 2 cache and the modified K62 Plus with 256KB. I started with both CPUs clocked at 200MHz and recorded some benchmark numbers. After that, I increased the clock speed to 400MHz and went through the same benchmarks again. When comparing the results, I considered a 2% margin of error. Any deviation by less than that, in my opinion, the difference is not large enough to attribute it to the change in the larger cache size. Ok then, let's have a look at the most significant changes in performance. Do you see something? Anything? Yes, there is nothing to see. The results were identical and within the margin of error. That doesn't sound right, does it? Could it be that the additional cache doesn't benefit the overall performance of the CPU? Maybe I'm using the wrong tests. Which led me to another question. How much does cache actually improve performance? And how important is each cache level? And this is what the rest of this video will be about. We are in a unique position with the AMD K6 family of processors. All of AMD's K62 and K63 CPUs have a level 1 cache of 64KB. But then there are models with 0, 128 or 256KB of level 2 cache. So let's have a look at the different models. There is the K62, which has a level 1 cache only. It was introduced in February 1999 at a price of 203 US dollars. The CPU has around 9.3 million transistors and was manufactured using the 0.25 micrometer process. Almost all Socket 7 motherboards could provide an additional external cache. Then there is the K63, which introduced an on-die 256KB level 2 cache at full CPU speed. It was introduced in May 1999 at a price of 476 US dollars. The transistor count increased significantly to over 21 million. The cache on the motherboard can be utilized, but it is demoted to level 3. In April 2000, AMD released the mobile versions of the K6 family with the K62 Plus. It has a 128KB level 2 cache and was manufactured using the new 0.18 micrometer process. Also in this case, the cache of the motherboard can be utilized as level 3 cache. And finally we get to the modified K62 Plus with 256KB of level 2 cache. I do not own a real K63 Plus, but that should be close enough. Same as with the previous two CPUs, the cache on the motherboard can be utilized as level 3 cache. Ok, now back to our problem. How can we determine what cache level influences performance the most? And can we find a use case that would benefit from a larger level 2 cache? For this test, I use the ASUS P55T2P4 once more. This is the only board I currently own that can supply a core voltage of 2V required by the AMD K62 and K63 CPUs. Additionally, the board has 512KB of cache. Apart from the usual tests, I wanted to see how long it takes to boot into Windows 98 using different combinations of available caches. I prepared Windows 98 to load CPU-C at startup. The time for this test starts 
with a first display of an image after switching on the power supply, and stops once the UI of CPU-C is fully loaded. Let's first test a CPU without any cache. Depending on your motherboard, you can disable the internal and external caches easily by turning them off in the BIOS. I used the modified K62 Plus for this test. Why did I use this CPU specifically? It was already installed in the motherboard and I believe that all the CPUs I'm using for testing today perform about the same in terms of computational performance. Without any cache, Windows 98 is painfully slow to boot. And even though all tests use CPUs clocked at 400 MHz, this one is slow. Very slow. Now I will save you from watching all the other 9 boot sequences of Windows 98. And let's rather have a look at a few charts instead. The K63 Plus in all charts is actually the modified K62 Plus with 256KB of level 2 cache. With no cache available to the CPU, the system is almost unusable, which we have just witnessed. Even opening the context menu on the desktop takes several seconds to show up. From switching on the power supply to opening CPU-C, 3 minutes and 30 seconds have passed. Now if we only enable the cache on the motherboard, also known as the external cache, the time to reach the Windows desktop reduces to 1 minute and 40 seconds. That is almost 2 minutes faster than not having any cache. The remaining results were collected from CPUs that have at least the level 1 cache enabled. The K62 has no on-die level 2 cache and is limited to its 64 kilobytes of level 1 cache. Nevertheless, Windows 98 boots within 35 seconds. Enabling the external cache on the motherboard helps to shave off another 2 seconds. But this improvement is no longer noticeable when booting the system. The K62 with enabled external cache is on par with the other CPUs that have their level 2 cache integrated into the CPU die. The level 2 cache definitely improves the performance, but the level 1 cache is clearly the one responsible for the most gains. Let's move on and have a look at the CPU-C benchmark results. Having no cache or only the external cache results in very poor performance. And although the cache on the motherboard is 8 times larger than the on-die 64KB cache of the K62, it cannot help the CPU by much to improve the performance. The level 1 cache on the other hand provides a massive improvement. The score is around 26 times higher compared to a CPU utilizing the external cache only. The K62 benefits from the combination of the internal level 1 cache and the external motherboard cache. Moving on to the CPUs with on-die level 2 cache, we can see again a good performance boost. Remember that the motherboard cache runs at the speed of the system clock, which is 66 MHz, while the on-die cache runs at the full CPU frequency, in this case at 400 MHz. In contrast to the K62, the K63 and the Plus versions do not benefit from the external cache. In this test, the on-die level 2 cache does matter. However, there is no difference between 128 and 256 kilobytes of level 2 cache. Moving on to the CPU-Z FPU performance. And here we see a similar picture with a difference that the K62 performs identical to the CPUs with on-die level 2 cache. It looks like that the FPU does not rely on level 2 cache at all, but rather on level 1 cache. For this test, the level 1 cache is clearly the most important cache in the system. Let's have a look at the memory throughput. Without cache, the CPU suffers greatly, and even if we enable the external cache, the situation barely improves. The K62 with level 1 cache reaches 100 MB per second, and benefits further when we enable the external cache. The CPUs with on-die level 2 cache perform the best and identical independent of the cache size. If we switch on the external cache, however, we see a performance regression. That would mean that it is better to switch off the motherboard cache if the CPU already has an on-die level 2 cache. For this test, the level 1 cache is clearly the most important cache. A level 2 cache improves performance only slightly. For the K62, this would be the external cache on the motherboard. For the others, it would be the on-die level 2 cache. If the CPU already has an on-die level 2 cache, 
The external cache, which would become the level 3 cache, seems to degrade performance and should be switched off according to those numbers. Let's move on to the final test, 3D Bench. In here we can see a similar picture as in the CPU-C CPU benchmark. Once the CPU has an on-die level 1 cache, performance increases significantly. We can also see that this benchmark benefits from a level 2 cache. For the K62, the external motherboard cache uplifts the numbers by around 15%. The CPU with integrated level 2 cache do not benefit from the external motherboard cache. But it also does not hurt the performance, as it did in the memory bandwidth test. And again, the level 1 cache is responsible for the highest performance gain. The level 2 cache improves things further and has the most impact when it is an on-die cache running at the full CPU speed. And that is it for the benchmarks and for this video. As a conclusion from the tests and the results we have seen, the major contributor to higher performance is the level 1 cache. The level 2 cache is not as important, but it helps to further improve CPU performance. A K62 without on-die level 2 cache benefits from the external cache, which is located on the motherboard. The CPUs with integrated level 2 cache, however, do not benefit from the external cache. Maybe there are situations in which the CPU would benefit from the external cache, but I have not seen it during my testing. Finally, none of the tests in this video showed a benefit of the 128KB of level 2 cache that was unlocked by the mod. That does not mean that the additional cache may not be useful during other workloads. Luckily, the extra cache does not negatively impact performance. I am sure there will be some program or game that will benefit from the larger level 2 cache. Certainly, we will find out in the future. Ok everyone, that's it. Like the video if you enjoyed the content and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more.